hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is faith and today guys i'll be checking out tim scott as he leaves the view speechless after confrontation and you guys i'm super excited as always if you're here to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up and without much ado let's jump right into this Video. Republican presidential candidate Tim Scott facing some of his harshest liberal media critics head on. The South Carolina senator joined the women of The View moments ago to make his case for the White House. And Scott's appearance comes after a series of racially charged attacks from many of the show's liberal co-hosts. You are the first black senator elected in the South since the Reconstruction. That would be about, I think, about 114 years. Yet you say that your life disproves uh, left, leftist lies. And, and yes. my question to you is, I'm the exception, right? You're the exception. Maybe even Miss Whoopi Goldberg is the exception. Oh, she's but, definitely the but, exception. But we are not the rule. <laughs> and so when it comes to racial inequality, it persists in, in five core aspects of life in the U.S. Economics, education, health care, criminal justice, and housing. At nearly every turn, these achievements were fought, threatened, and erased most often by white violence. You have indicated that you don't believe in systemic racism. What is your definition of systemic racism? Let me ask, answer the uh, question that you've answered. Does it or does it even exist yeah. in your mind? Let me, let me uh, answer the question this way. One of the things I, I think about, and one of the reasons why I'm on the show is because of the comments that were made, frankly, on this show, that the only way for a young African-American kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule. That is a dangerous, offensive, disgusting message to send to our young people today, that the only way to succeed is by being the exception. I will tell you that if my life is the exception, uh, I can't imagine. But, but I can't it imagine, is. But it's not actually. Here's, here's, it's been here's 114 my, years. Yeah, so, so the fact of the matter is we've had an African-American president, African-American uh, vice president. We've had two African-Americans to be secretaries of the state. Kaylee, just one of his many incredibly uh, thoughtful, reasoned, prepared comments throughout his time there on The View. It was phenomenal what Senator Scott did. He came locked and loaded with facts. Mm -hmm. He came across good-natured, charming, but strong. Uh, he went on to say, just after that clip, not only have we had a black president, currently black vice president, he said, I have a black police chief in my community, black head of highway patrol. There are black men and women who are anchors at ABC, CBS, NBC, ESPN, Fox News. Uh, and then he goes on to say, we have black unemployment under 5% for the first time under a Republican president, 95% high school graduation rate. And he said, yesterday's exception is today's rule. Sonny Hostin looked at him speechless. Nothing to say, because those are facts. Those are undeniable what he said. Uh, and then they were only left to, in the next block, for some reason, Whoopi and Sonny hugged and like cuddled. It was very bizarre. Uh, I mean, look at that. Very odd. And then they shouted, one of them, systemic racism. So he did so well because he showed up with facts. He's so positive, so optimistic. But the women of The View, they continued to lie about Ron DeSantis. Anna Navarro said that he doesn't want to teach black history, which another host on that show has had to apologize before because it's an outright lie. So they may have a defamation issue on their hands there. Um, and not only that, another host said Ron DeSantis isn't conservative. I don't know what they drink over at The View, but um, it's something imaginary. <laughs> um, and let's just watch a clip of that guy of one of the moments uh, referencing Governor DeSantis. You the think Disney is law. the radical left? Well, I'm talking about... No, but answer. do you think Disney is radical left? Well, I think Disney and Ron have been in a combat zone for a number of months over what I thought was the right issue as it relates to our young kids and what they're being indoctrinated with. I thought he started off on the, wrong, on the right foot on that issue. It is uh, 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 no, 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 not here. I'm sorry, sir. Do not boo. This is the view. We accept we don't have to believe everything yeah. people say. Okay, so good for Whoopi, I guess, chastising the audience. We don't boo here. She could have added all the vitriol on this show will come from the hosts. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's kind of how they roll over at The View. And speaking of the hosts of that show, I did notice that there was one conspicuous absence today mm -hmm. around that table. Joy Behar wasn't there. One of the people who was lecturing recently to Tim Scott and Clarence Thomas about systemic racism, something that she, I guess, believes that she understands as a rich white woman in New York, as opposed to those two men who grew up in the South as black men. And I think perhaps Joy Behar could have benefited from sitting there and listening and maybe learning something from Tim Scott today. But uh, she was 
playing hooky, apparently. Yeah, and you know, she's always off every Monday, Kennedy, but to John Roberts' point earlier on this network... Maybe she's on President is, Biden's schedule. <laughs> this is a big deal, you know? This is a, set, a sitting senator, and he's a presidential candidate, and it's also the subject and the target mm -hmm. of much of her ill-founded, absolutely racist, totally nonsensical, fantastical comments about him. So you would think she would make an exception and show up for work. Uh, why would you? I mean, she would then have to be confronted with the truth, and the truth is her comments were incredibly bigoted and divisive and you know that has become par for the course on the view but it's very interesting because as Sonny Hostin was sort of outlining structural system systemic racism in this country you know I'm listening to all those things and it's not that I disagree with her but what I see is the common element, especially in education, housing, and healthcare, is too much government. So if government is creating the systemic racism, then the cure for that is not more government. It is getting government out of the way. So people from every community, every background, every neighborhood uh, can have a chance to succeed. But as, the, as long as the government is so deeply entrenched, don't expect any of those things to change and don't expect positive outcomes. Molly, that's, she hit the nail on the head because that's sort of what The View, in my opinion, is representing uh, today and always, which is a fallback and a knee-jerk of these woke talking points or these liberal left knee-jerk talking points without the thought behind it as to the rationale or the policy. And when confronted by actual facts or statistics, mm -hmm. including the truth that throwing money at something doesn't actually work, they simply falter and then revert right back to their talking points that will likely make the headlines of the self-apologizing and self-amplifying left-wing media yeah you know he you know going into that situation this is a GOP candidate running for president that an opportunity there to reach out to people that he ordinarily wouldn't have a chance to uh, reach out to and you mentioned he did an excellent job with a lot of facts and a lot of information the one thing that I the big challenge I think is getting past uh, this dis big discussion on race where he can just talk about being among this big swath of of candidates and stand out. So first he's got to get past the, you know, just kind of pushing back against every idea, every democratic talking point, every everything that's thrown at him. And then the issue at hand where they had previously said all these terrible things and untangling all of that. So how does he make a dent forward and say, I'm your candidate and make progress in that direction? I, th I think it was a great opportunity for him and he did perfectly fine uh, uh, there and, and availed himself well. Uh, but how does he stand out as a candidate is the next big question. Yeah. yeah. I thought he showed um, incredible grace under the pressure of, yes. again, what was thoughtless, irrational, ad hominem attacks. All right. That was such an interesting one with Tim Scott. I really had fun reacting to this video. And let me know what you guys think about Tim Scott being on the view. Do you think that Tim Scott really answered every question well? And I really love the way he answered them. And you guys, he was really not an exception. And... Let me know what your thoughts are on this one. I really had fun reacting to this video. If you guys totally enjoyed watching, give it a massive thumbs up, comment, share, and all that good stuff. And this is me officially signing out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.